Good morning and welcome to Sunday morning worship at Epiphany Lutheran Church. We're honored that you have chosen to spend a part of your Sunday with us. We hope that you will be inspired by the message of Jesus today and we hope that you will have some message of comfort and encouragement to take home with you following worship. A number of announcements to highlight today. First of all, every Sunday we celebrate Holy Communion at Epiphany. If you'd like to be a part of that, this would be a great time to gather your bread, your grape juice, and your wine. We want to thank all of you who have continued to contribute generously in support of our mission, even during these challenging and difficult times. We are grateful for your generosity. And on behalf of the staff, I want to thank you for the kind notes and cards and emails and text messages and Facebook messages that have been incredibly encouraging of us as we continue to live out what we believe is God's call to serve you and to serve among you as the people of Epiphany. I also want to thank you for your generosity yesterday as a part of the drive-up, drop-off effort to support First English Lutheran Church and the Ohio Agency on Aging. I also want to remind you that you can still contribute $17 to support a hand-washing station that is being made in Haiti by our friend Verbo and a group of his colleagues. If we can get 100 gifts of $17, we will blow through our $1,700 goal. And if you're able to give more than $1,700, that would be terrific. We want to continue being the kind of generous people that we have been for years, the kind of generous people that God calls us to be as we reach out and share the good gifts that God has given to us. Again, welcome to worship this morning. I invite you to prepare with me as we enter into a time of confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gentle shepherd, you guide us in right paths and lead us in the ways of righteousness. But we have allowed our anger, our rage, our greed, and at times even hate to direct our paths. We have overreacted. We have taken more than our share, and we have despised others that seem to have it all. Forgive us, God, for not following your ways. Forgive us for not remembering that we are your sheep, and you are the good shepherd. Forgive us when we have not listened to your voice and instead have acted in the ways of the world. Guide us back to your path, to loving you and loving our neighbors. Help us to unclench our fists and open our hands in hope, healing, forgiveness, and love. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The Good Shepherd knows us, loves us and forgives us. Hear the voice of the Good Shepherd in this moment, calling out to you with a voice of welcome and restoration. Having been reconciled to one another and to God, we share a sign of God's peace. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. God's, God's peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with 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 you, Baxter. Good boy. Peace be with you. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Peace of the Lord. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord's peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Shepherd of our lives, guide us to the still waters. Lead us on the right paths. Walk beside us when we go through the darkest valleys. Help us to know your comforting presence is always with us. We know that in you there is nothing to be afraid of. So help us to stand for love, peace, and justice. We know that you prepare a table before us, that you care for us, that we are your sheep forever. Help us to do justice in this world, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you and follow your path. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who is our good shepherd. Amen. As we continue focusing on the wonderful news that Jesus is our Good Shepherd, we are grateful to Tiffany and Elizabeth Arman for offering us some special music that helps to illuminate today's theme. Oh 
I'd like to share with you the familiar words from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So what do we talk about when we talk about God? What names do we use to describe God? How do we describe God's work in the world? Father, Mother, all-powerful, Lord, all-knowing, Savior, all-controlling, King, Redeemer, Warrior, Prince of Peace, Judge, Friend, Almighty. Of all of these metaphors for God, the one that I haven't mentioned, which is the one that consistently tops the list of metaphors used to describe God is Shepherd. If I took an informal poll on Facebook this morning, I'd guess there are a lot of you, maybe even a majority of you, who have heard Psalm 23. Maybe you heard it sung during Sunday school. Maybe you heard about it at church camp. Maybe you heard about it during a church service. Maybe you had a grandparent who could read it by heart. If I started reading Psalm 23, I'll bet that quite a few of you would be able to recite parts of it from memory, maybe even all of it. I bet that people not wanting to have anything to do with the church can recite parts of Psalm 23. The nuns, the spiritual but not religious, members of the Church Alumni Association, the used to be spiritual but never will be again, the never been spiritual and don't plan to be, people in all of these groups would also be able to recite parts of Psalm 23. Why? Funerals. I try to meet with families prior to funerals to select hymns, special music, and scripture passages they want to be sure are a part of the service that we'll have to honor a loved one. The most common passages people select are Romans 8 and Psalm 23. In Romans 8, the Apostle Paul reminds us that nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God that we know in Jesus. 
It makes sense that people who are grieving want to hear those hopeful words from the Apostle Paul in the eighth chapter of Romans. And then there is Psalm 23. Whether people attending a funeral have never darkened the doors except at Christmas, Easter, wedding, or a funeral, or have left the church as soon as they left home, or struggled with hateful images they heard about God from church people, or just can't wrap their heads around the idea of God at all, there is something about the idea of God as a good shepherd that resonates with all of these groups of people and the rest of us when we are grieving the death of someone we love, when we're in pain, when we're lonely, when we're anxious, when we're confused, when our hearts are breaking, when we are afraid of an invisible enemy that threatens to yank us from our safe place. In the midst of all of these situations, the words of Psalm 23 are a sure thing. They are words we can trust. They are words that comfort us in a way that no other passage in the Bible quite does. And so as we think about Psalm 23 and the God who leads us beside still waters, we can trust this voice of God in our lives. But in the midst of this terrible crisis, whose voice can we trust to guide us through the valley of the shadow of death, which is what it often feels like we are living in? Who can we trust as we go into that deep valley wondering if we're alone and wondering if there is a voice we can trust, we can hear, and we can know will lead us through to the other side? Whose voice do we trust now? Do we trust leaders who say they have our best interests at heart yet give no sign of being trustworthy? Do we trust leaders who cynically appeal to our religious impulses, yet give no sign at all of being people of faith themselves? Who do we trust? Do we trust leaders who say they will walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death, yet stand on the edge of the valley and leave us to navigate uncharted, frightening landscapes by ourselves? Do we trust leaders who say they are, quote, keeping us in their thoughts and prayers, unquote, and then conveniently forget what the Bible has to say about caring for people that Jesus called the least of these, people who are suffering from COVID-19 in hospitals, the 30 million Americans who have lost their jobs and filed for unemployment since mid-March and have no financial margin that allows them to pay the rent, pay the utility bills, buy groceries, and so they find themselves on the streets, under bridges, on the subway systems in large cities. These people, these sick and vulnerable people, are the people of whom Jesus said, whenever any of these people are overlooked or ignored, it's me that you're ignoring. Do we trust leaders who want to open the floodgates and expose us to the threats of a terrible virus when scientists and physicians around the country and the world are asking us to exercise caution? Do we trust leaders who use positions of power to manipulate, to confuse and threaten people rather than provide steady guidance, wisdom, and love? Who are the leaders we can trust? who is the leader we can trust. The Gospel of John gives us the answer. In chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who was not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. 
I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. There are plenty of hired hands posing as good shepherds in the midst of this crisis. Plenty of hired hands posing as good shepherds running away at the first sign of a challenge to their place of privilege and power. Plenty of would-be good shepherds, hired hands, imposters who try to convince us that they will lay their lives down for us until it comes time for them to lay down their lives. The leader whose voice we can trust, the leader who cares about us during this terrible crisis, the leader who does lay his life down for us just as he promises he will is Jesus, the good shepherd. The good shepherd is a good leader because any good leader goes first. Any good leader takes the risk by leading first. Any good leader is willing to show followers how to go by going first. A good leader doesn't shove the followers ahead just in case there might be some kind of difficulty. The good shepherd, Jesus, the voice we can trust, goes first so that we can be safe, so that we can be solid in his love, knowing that he will never guide us in a way that will hurt us. We all know that uh, at some point we will walk through the valley of the shadow. For those of us who have lived long enough, which isn't really all that long, we know what it's like to walk through the valley of the shadow, whether it's grieving the death of somebody you love, whether it's losing a job that you loved, whether it's a broken relationship, whether it's been a fearful time of whatever nature in your life, we have all walked through the valley of the shadow. We're walking through the valley of the shadow today, and it's scary. States like Ohio are beginning to open up slowly, and we wonder how things are going to go. We wonder if God will continue to walk with us through the valley of the shadow or will we be left alone. So we're in the midst of that kind of experience. Whose voice do we trust? Who goes ahead of us? Who gives his life for us? It is the good shepherd. It is Jesus who walks with us through those valleys. There will be valleys in the days ahead. So much uncertainty in our lives and in the world right now. We may find ourselves in another valley of the shadow, but if we do, we are not alone. If we do, we have a good shepherd whose voice we trust, who goes first, who goes ahead to make a way for us. We know that valleys are a part of life, and yet because of the good shepherd, who always has our best interest at heart, we do not have to be afraid. I'd like to close this morning by reading Psalm 23 from the King James Version. It's one that perhaps you heard earlier in your life, in your life if you've been around a while. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Whose voice can we trust? The Good Shepherd. Whose voice can we trust? The one who lays down his life for us. Whose voice can we trust? 
the one who goes first to walk with us through those scary places and to bring us to the other side. Who can you trust? The good shepherd, his voice, his love. Amen. As we enter this time of prayer, I ask that you take this, this moment to calm your mind, to calm your body, to find a posture of prayer as we offer our prayers to God for the church, the world, and all those in need. Good and gracious God, shepherd of all creation, we gather today as your flock. We thank you for the warm sunshine, the blooming trees and flowers, and the green grass, all signs that life flourishes even in these difficult times. God, we ask that you guide local, state, and national leaders as they make decisions based on every human need and the safety of all people as we look at the possibility of lifting restrictions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you continue to lead those who have been on the front lines of this pandemic from the beginning, be with doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers as they continue to work to save the lives of those, those most affected by this virus. God, we ask that you be with those who are soon to be called back to work. Keep them and their families safe as they re-enter the workplace. Our Good Shepherd, we know that you walk through with us through the darkest valleys and the greenest of meadows. 
Be with those who are in need of your healing touch and presence this day. Today, we pray for Zach, Jen, and Elena Campbell, for the Kern family. We pray for Dirk as he recovers from open heart surgery, for Dale and his family, Dave, Marianne, and Thomas. We pray for Joanne Frank, Sammy Goose. We pray for the Stanton family. We pray for Kate and Jim Swanson and his family as they grieve the loss of a family member to cancer. We pray for Greg Ochup as he continues to battle cancer. We pray for Mark as he starts his treatment for prostate cancer and for Linda Feetner as she prepares for cancer surgery. We offer prayers today for baby Piper Joy and her family as they grieve the loss of that young one. We pray for Linda and the loss of her father. And we thank you for farmers and ranchers and the, pro the prospect of a growing season that is so full of unknowns. God, we are promised that you are always with us. Continue to shepherd us beyond our wants, beyond our fears, and guide us from the darkness of death into the light of new life in you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all of them to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we prepare to pray our Lord's Prayer, I would invite you to be comfortable in a prayer posture. It might be folding your hands and bowing your head. It might be opening your hands as a way of giving and receiving. It might be that you look around the room to see God's kingdom as it's expressed in your family, in the people you care about, the people you love the most. And so please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
shall not fear. Yea, though I walk through the valley low, yea, though the path gets steep, surely goodness will follow me. Every promise will be light to my feet when my heart We hope you've been encouraged by the good news that Jesus is our good shepherd. These are trying times, and it might at times feel to you as though you are walking through the valley of the shadow. And maybe as you walk through that valley of the shadow, you wonder if you are alone. The good news from Psalm 23 in the Gospel of John, where Jesus is portrayed as the good shepherd, is that we never walk alone. Our good shepherd lays down his life for us. Our good shepherd loves us as fully as he can. And because of that, we are never alone. I encourage you to pray Psalm 23 this week as a devotion, as an assurance, as a promise that our good shepherd loves us, will never leave us alone, and will never, ever let us down. He's risen forever glorified. Risen, he's risen, King Jesus, King Jesus is Where is 
is your sting. Conquered by the King. Resurrected One. Shining like the sun. Breaking through the fear. Victory is here. Victory is here now. Oh, oh. Thank you so much for gathering with us this morning for worship. It's been a delight to be together with you, uh, even virtually. We're going to have some music playing for the next minute or two, and we hope that you'll take an opportunity to greet one another again with a sign of peace, which is always a good way to share Christ's love. We hope you have a great day and a great week.